Uh, your brother George was sitting here, you say? That's right, opposite me. We, we were partners. Yeah. Ah, his view of the garden is an interesting one. Outside, gentlemen. You see how the window is masked by those bushes? Well, as to be seen from George Tregenis's chair, the figure must have been somewhere within this area. Uh, Mr. Tregenis, show me exactly where you think it was standing. Well, that's not easy. I, I, I'd know more than a glimpse, what with the rain and all. I couldn't even be sure if it were a man or beast. Yes. Now, uh, is this the place on the path? Hmm? Holmes, watch out for the... Huh? Up. <laughs> Oh! Watering can. Ah, my dear Mr. Tregenis, my apologies. No matter. Here, let me put this out of arm's way. Ah, so clumsy of me. You see, you're not yourself at all. Really, Doctor? Yes, well, I've finished out here. Perhaps you'd like to talk to the housekeeper. No, there's something else I'd like to see first. She must have been a beautiful woman. That she was, Doctor. And now look at her face. This is just the vessel, my friend. Her soul is at peace. Did Dr. Richards examine her, Mr. Tregenis? He did, sir. With what result? He couldn't find any signs of injury or illness. He said as far as he was concerned, she should still be alive. Was he able to estimate the time of death? He reckoned she'd been gone about six hours, Doctor. Six hours? Ah! About that, I'd see, Mortimer. Uh, but yes. What in God's name could have done this? I, I, I don't know. I, I have never, never... Doctor! He was really that affected? Mm, poor chap had obviously never seen the like before. And he's not a young man. I believe we should go back downstairs now. A terrible tragedy, my friend. Yes, Vicar, it is that. So much of her life still before her. So much to look forward to. Requiescat in pace. Amen. Amen. Now, uh, Watson, uh, I'd like you to speak to the housekeeper while I have another look at the sitting room. See if I can salvage something from the mess. Yes, of course. Mr. Holmes, do you have the least clue? What in the name of heaven can have happened here? Uh, what indeed? What can have blasted two grown men out of their senses and shocked a fit and healthy woman? into death. That's hellish, Mr. Holmes. Hellish. My dear sir, I tell you, it's not of this world. It's the work of the devil. Uh, let's sit here for a while. Yes, of course. <clears throat> well, what did you learn from the housekeeper? Mrs. Porter? Mm. She heard nothing at all during the night. She's willing to swear to it. Mm. Is she a reliable witness? Well, she's very upset by the whole business, of course. Still very shaky. But you think she's to be trusted? Yes, I do. She's completely adamant. No one and nothing could have entered that house last night without her knowledge. Nothing? Mm -hmm. You're surely not subscribing to the supernatural theory, too. No, 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 no. Of course not. Oh, good. If this matter's beyond humanity, it's certainly beyond me. I think we should exhaust the natural explanations before we fall back on that particular theory. Right, it still doesn't have to be a person. Suppose it was a, an animal of some kind. Something so horrific that it sent them mad. Some sort of unknown species. Which left absolutely no traces of its visit. What else is there? Did you find anything significant in the room? No. <coughs> no. <coughs> no. Let's get a firm grip on what little we do know. Then, when fresh facts arise, we'll be ready to fit them into their places. Very well. Now, <clears throat> when did this tragedy occur? Well, sometime after Mortimer Tregenis left the house. Hmm. Well, we're going to be more accurate than that. Oh? Well, whatever took place, it happened immediately after he left the room, at the most a few minutes afterwards. How can you be so sure? Well, the cards were still on the table. They hadn't changed their positions or even pushed back their chairs. Ah, oh, that's right. Yeah. But Tregenis said... Uh, just a moment. Hmm? <laughs> yes, here we are. They were just starting one last hand. George was for going to bed. 
But Brenda insisted. One final hand wouldn't have taken them long. Tregunnis left at around 10.15, so the incident was probably no later than 10.30 last night. Hmm. If someone was lurking around, you'd have thought Tregunnis might have seen them as he left. No, uh, no, yeah, it's unlikely. Well, given the darkness and the rain, he didn't linger. He walked away swiftly in the direction of the vicarage. The tracks were perfectly clear, once I knew which were his. Hmm. I like the way you've got an impression of his boots. <laughs> Once I realised. Mm -hmm. It took you long enough. I wasn't flattered that you thought I was so far gone that I was falling over things. <clears throat> Were there any signs of this mysterious figure outside the window? No, none whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Why were you so surprised at how long Brenda Tregenis had been dead? My reaction wasn't surprised. Oh? What then? The doctor examined her at, uh, well, what, um, eight o'clock, mm. and the time of death was six hours earlier. At, uh, two in the morning. Oh, my God. Exactly. <coughs> <coughs> Whatever happened occurred at half past ten. So, that wretched woman suffered the most appalling agonies for over three hours before she finally gave up the struggle and died. Holmes, what is it? We're being observed. Ah, you've noticed him at last. He's been watching us for several minutes. You are Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the detective. And you are Dr. Leon Sterndale, the explorer. Have you made any advance? Dr. Sterndale, we are here on holiday. Uh, my friend and companion, Dr. John Watson. Good morning. I say again, have you solved this mystery? Well, tell me, sir. What do you know of this affair, Dr. Sterndale? And what claim have you on our confidence? I've come to know this Tregenis family very well. On my mother's side, I could call them cousins. Indeed. And their, well, their strange fate has naturally been a great shock to me. Naturally. I may tell you, sir, that I was on my way to Africa. But when the news reached me this morning in Plymouth, I came straight back to help in this inquiry. What about your boat? I'll take the next. Dear me. Well, that's friendship indeed. I tell you, they were relatives. On your mother's side. Was your luggage already aboard? Some of it. Most was still at the hotel. Surely this event couldn't have found its way into the Plymouth papers already. No, sir. I had a telegram. Might I ask from whom? You are very inquisitive, Mr. Holmes. It's my business. Hmm. Well, I've no objection to telling you it was from Mr. Roundhay, the vicar. Thank you. Now, to answer your original question... Yes. I've not cleared my mind entirely on the case, but I've every hope of reaching some conclusion. Do your suspicions point in any particular direction? I can hardly answer that. <laughs> then I've wasted my time. Fascinating. Mm. It was damnably rude. Shall we go? Wait for me at the cottage. I, uh, uh, whatever you say. <laughs> a policeman's lot is not a happy one. Happy one. Hello. We are devil ridden. Oh, my poor parish. Yes. Devil ridden. Easy, Mr. Ryan. Yes, sit down. Satan himself is loose. Sit down. Calm yourself. Yes, yes, of course. <sighs> it's better. Now, tell us, what's wrong? What's happened? The same symptoms. The exact same symptoms. Mr. Mortimer Tregenis is dead. <sighs> You're sure nothing's been touched? Nothing? Nothing? I gave strict orders. Excellent. Good God. He, he has this room and the bedroom above. Have you sent for Dr. Richard <laughs> and the police? <laughs> yes, well, they must work fast before they arrive. Uh, has that window been open all night? No, my maid did it this morning. I thought you said that nothing had been touched. But the atmosphere was horrible. Oh, yes. Look at this lamp. <coughs> Oh, it's run dry. 
The wick's burning. It smells dreadful. Now, Watson, don't touch it. Your notebook. Oh, Vicar, was it your maid who found the body? Yes, poor girl. Yes, where is she now? I sent her back to bed. She was dreadfully pale. I may need to speak to her later. Watson, mm -hmm. ready? Ready, very good. Now, oh, the lamp, as you said, still flaring. <coughs> this is near oil. Wick burned down to just under half its depth. <coughs> <coughs> And the fire not being lit. Dead man, fully clothed, but dressed in a hurry. Had his bed been slept at? Yes, it had. Mm. What time did he retire? We well, just gone midnight. We sat up together. I tried to give him what comfort yes, I could. Good man, leaning back in his chair, hands on the edge of the table. Spectacles pushed up onto his forehead. Face turned toward the window. Good Lord above. Could he have seen something out there, too? Vicar, please. This is the time for facts, not speculation. Now, uh, uh, where was I? What's, what's a face turned toward the, the window. window? Yes, yes. Uh, features distorted and twisted. Yes, exactly like those of his sister. Limbs convulsed. Fingers interlocked and... Uh, uh, rigid. Mm, no perceptible odour. Uh, no staining of the skin. No visible wounds. Hmm. Show me his bedroom. Ah. Watson, an envelope. Oh, quickly, quickly. Here. Thank you. Ah, here. Excellent. Any notes for up here? Uh, 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 no. Oh. I can see Dr. Richard's carriage. And then I suggest you go and wait for him while I take another look downstairs. Hmm. Holmes, um, surely you've looked at that lamp enough. Yes, almost, Doctor, almost. <coughs> <coughs> no envelope, mm. please. Oh, thank you. Uh. Ah. He's here. Ah, 60 ish. Not too strong. Old-fashioned. Set in his ways. Typical small village country doctor. Yes, indeed. Good. Excellent. Any last notes? Uh, yes, uh, one moment, my dear fellow. Ah. <laughs> what did I miss? Uh, I wasn't looking at the doctor. This window sill's far more interesting. What have you found? What I expected to find. Holmes! And that, I think, is everything. Uh, is it finished? Exactly as you ordered. Ah, splendid. Good walk? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Most productive. Good. Right. Ah, your result. Ah. This lamp is the exact duplicate of the one in Treginis's room. Uh, it's the only sort they stock in the village shop. Yes. The oil? Same thing. That's applied to the vicarage. Yes, excellent. Yes. And the timings? From a full reservoir of fuel, the oil runs out after two hours and thirty minutes. That's when the wick starts to catch. Yes. It takes another fifteen and a half minutes, give or take the odd second, for the wick to be burnt down as far as this. Yes. Exactly the same amount of charring as on Tregenis's lamp. So the maximum time that one could have been burning was two hours and 45 minutes. Ah, there we go there at nine. Mm. Subtract two and three quarter hours and we get 6.15 in the morning. And that's the earliest the lamp could have been put on. Mm. Well after first light. Exactly. The lamp was lit when no lamp was necessary. Well done, Watson. Your usual invaluable help. Thank you. But I have to confess, I'm no nearer a solution. Why was the lamp lit? Ask yourself this. What are the common factors in both tragedies? Mm, the expressions of horror, the twisted limbs. Mm. Yes. What, what else? The victims were related. What else? Both occurred in closed rooms. Excellent. Two more parallels. Mm. Uh, I can't see them. <laughs> exactly. Concentrate on another sense. I'm sorry, I don't understand. The atmosphere, the atmosphere in each room. 